Hey guys. Well, it's Thursday night and welcome to your Especially Wednesday again. Whoops. <laughs> again, it's the wrong day. Welcome to your Wednesday evening live. Wednesday? Yeah. And it's the last one um, in regards to the 30 day challenge that we were set. Um, and so the topic of today was quite well picked. Uh, considering it's the last one and it was for us to summarize what we've kind of learned, established, discovered over these 30 days. And to discuss who's going to be the next president. And who's being voted out of Big Brother. Yes. Oh, wait, wrong show. Wrong year. Wrong, wrong year. No, no, it's still... Look, that's... Well, it doesn't have much longer left. <laughs> Jeez, no, like, so, they're socially distant. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so cool things to chat about today. Um, we'll get back to why I blew up the site this evening on the way home. Um, uh, just a mini meltdown. Just a mini meltdown. Um, but we've created, so just before we do, uh, I've created a bit of a YouTube channel to go along with this and created a cute little series that I will pop below some of these for you guys just to follow along if you've missed them, to make it easy and the whole YouTube thing and Dane's videoing us on his video camera. Cute. He um, wishes it could be as cool, but <laughs> it's just... Uh, <laughs> When kids, not... He's getting closer and closer to the camera. We can tell that he wants to really be in here, but he's just too chicken. I haven't moved a centimetre, not even a millimetre. Anyway, guys, so today's topic <laughs> was 30 days. What have you learned? Well, lots of things. Lots. Lots and lots. We've learned, first of all, and it's been very, very prevalent throughout every single one of these lives, that everything, first of all, is connected. Every single life that we've done is connected to the last. And in so many ways, they've flowed on quite well but comes back to everything in our life, in my little humble opinion, comes to balance and presence. Mm. It is at the essence and the center of everything. And if without those, we're just not living our best lives and we're not doing it consciously and in a great way. So to improve everything we're doing and in every way, for me, it's just been reconfirming and reassuring me that's, that focus on living consciously, try and quiet the mind, do less, and find a balance, and balance doesn't always have to be 50-50. Sometimes it's 90% here and 10% over here, but it's the best balance for you. That's one of the big things i found. Mm. Second one, I also found that this couch is quite comfortable to sit on. I really, <laughs> I spent a lot of time deep diving to what mattered the most. And um, yeah, look, I can find a number of couches, a number of no, positions. Can't be as a wife couch we have. Like well, I mean, this is not the comfiest couch. I prefer not this one. You prefer oh, not this one? There is actually a person here, but you know, we're just a little down human now. Over here. <laughs> or an attack helicopter, apparently. Um, and so, yeah, so for me, I've learned that so many of you are keen for these conversations. So many of you have enjoyed these perspectives and these these nuggets that we've put out there as content and we've really actually been quite surprised as to how much um how much you guys have actually spoken we've even had any here today of our cleaner and she's like i get there with a glass of wine and watch you guys all the time and i was like oh shit it's like so we know that you maybe not might not always see us live or um you may watch the replay or but it's been really really cool to hear that feedback but i've been i've been hearing mostly from a lot of people that they're going it's really cool conversations that you guys are having uh, it's a great topic and the fact that we do work well together as, as this piece and as much as I have shut down all my other businesses pretty much most of the way, um, I think through these discussions I've realised the reason why I'm where I am and the reason my life has become as, as fruitful as it is right now is by doing less and focusing on what feels good. And as you'll notice with the lives and the replays is that we've not been linear. We've not followed suit. We don't follow suit. We don't follow what we're told. We do what feels good and what works for us. I'm and I saying. think that's a massive message in all of this and with everything that's going on in the world right now is to go within you, look within your life, find your balance, find your peace, find your rhythm and your fun and run with that. So I, I love that. And actually, if, if it wasn't stealing it from Adrian Mishla, she did a series called Find What Feels Good. Mm. And everything, that's what we're doing. And I, I consistently say this when I'm teaching yoga and when I'm doing things is... Go for that. Do it, do it. When you open up this way, if it feels great, do more of it. If it doesn't feel great, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it because someone, and essentially most of the time when teachers or people or guides or whoever you're learning from, they say, do this, you do this. What I'm saying is to listen and think and feel for yourself. And I've been saying this consistently, not just in yoga, I've been saying this forever. Feel into it. Find it. If it doesn't feel great for you, 
why the bloody hell are you doing it? Mm. If something doesn't feel amazing or if it's not improving or helping you do you, don't do it. We're not here for that. If things don't sit in your psyche, if things don't add up to you, do not do it. Just because the law says it, the police say it, the old mentors say it, stop filming me. <laughs> <laughs> All of these things happen. That doesn't mean you have to do this. Mm. That actually, there's this massive part of me that just pushes and rebels and pushes back when you've been told. Yeah. I think even with this challenge, like, love you, Elizabeth, love you, Phil, for everything you guys did in this space. Mm. Um, and even the whole space of me, I haven't gone back through my notes yet or done anything with that because it hasn't been the time or the space for it. But this portion right here has been so transformative for us because it's brought us into this awareness that we love. We're not scared of speaking about the things. We're not scared of showing up. We're not scared of saying something uncomfortable. And today was such, it was three moments that really articulated this raging fire within me about all the things that are going on and what people are willing to accept and how people are willing to act and how fear shapes and models people's persona. Yeah, and there's, a, there's some really interesting points and we're going to circle around here. Um, we had a chat to a friend of ours today and I like to, we all like to inspire people, but sometimes keep people accountable as well. And I've had two people that have said to us, the way we've done things has helped keep them accountable in pushing back and not just oh, blindly yeah. accepting. Yeah. And I appreciate that because sometimes... People just go about doing their business and give in to the peer pressure or give in to whatever else. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's for or against or whichever way it is. And I'm not telling people, and I would never tell people which way to think. And I don't ever want to say to anyone out there, this is the right way, this is the wrong way. But what I will damn well say is think. Think for yourself. This is what you're here for. Use your conscious mind. Don't just mindlessly go and do something. Don't just say, oh, the government said I'm going to do this. The government said it's the right thing. That's the biggest load of bullshit. It's a big cop out for you to not use your conscious mind and go, mm, you know what? That doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I won't walk into the gas chamber. Just think <laughs> for the moment. And when this gentleman said that today, and our other mate Timmy has also said that as well, we've helped keep them accountable and to use their conscious mind and think a little bit differently. It makes me a little bit excited that possibly we're doing the right thing in, in, a, in a good sense. The way I do things with my children as well is I, I very much say, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but I'm saying think. And I've got your back if you're doing the right thing. I tell you what, you're in what shit if you're doing the wrong thing. Or, and what I mean by that is something that doesn't come from love, kindness, compassion, or empathy, or from free thinking. If you're doing what you're told and it's still the wrong thing to do, I'm not going to be impressed. Mm. So there's, there's this big part where... We need, all of us, collectively, need to raise our own consciousness. Mm. And I feel like that's something that I've learned through these lives. We're actually able to impact a little bit. We've learned that we, we can collectively raise the consciousness, even if it's one or two people. And I know there's more because I've had a few, maybe three people We've specifically say. We've got friends that have literally messaged us in the last month and said, due to your lives, due to our conversations, and due to your, the fact that both of you will walk into anywhere and stand your ground, speak your truth and not be pushed over and not be, um, and not fall to the judgment, to the difficulty of standing in your truth or any of that. And they've all stood their ground. They've done the opposite of the status quo and they have taken the step for being empowered themselves to make their own decision, to sit there, get their information together and make the choices for themselves. Yes. And I think the, uh, we've now been welcomed into some particular groups of society that have enabled us to become quite educated in things and to see the things that are not mainstream, the things that are not able to be spoken about publicly necessarily because of certain things. And that's a choice we're making because the, the realisation that this month has given us is the need for freedom of speech, the freedom of self-expression and the willingness to show up in spite of the way that the status quo is going. Yeah. That what, what I would encourage everyone to do, and it takes 10 seconds, or well maybe 10 seconds, maybe a minute, two minutes, write down from one to 10 your values. Write down them. I, my values are peace, love, compassion, kindness, freedom, empathy, whatever it happens to be, and then list them with one being your highest, and then work out, just go through and put them in, and then put them in a line. 
this can actually make a big impact on the way you live your life and the way you do, but it'll also help you understand why you do things. One thing that I can guarantee is not on that list is obedience. There's not one person that values their own, but being told what to do and going, I like being told what to do and being obedient to whatever else it happens to be. All of us, wherever it is on this list, have this huge value of freedom. And I think as a human being, that's our damn well human nature is to be free. What Yet would, so many are giving it away. We said this today, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but the way I would define communistic or communism is when a tyrannical, a dictatorship or any sort of leadership government impacts your free will by some sort of a law or by some sort of nonsense. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be government. If you're at a, a school, if you're doing a course and the person that's running it, the person that's at the head of this comes and says, you will sit down, you will shut up, you will do this as I say, do as I say. That can be okay for some things, but not anything that impacts your damn human rights, your freedom or anything like that. And when that impacts me in any way at all, I just want to fight. I want to push back. Isn't it curious how in school, like especially the younger years, or even in a, in a, um, a, a tight-knit family, um, how when you're a young child, you fight, you rebel, you're curious, you push the boundaries, you sit in wonder and you, you take things and people say no and you're naturally going to push against it because you want to know how far, how big, how hard, how easy, how stupid, how loud, how hard, how hot, all the things. But then it gets beaten out of us through the dictatorship, through the schooling system. And then we become these drone adults who mm -hmm. have this, eventually, eventually, you'll all agree with me, that at some point you get this feeling where you're like, is this it? Mm -hmm. Or you get the feeling of something's not right, but I don't know what it is. So people live this life to this point where eventually in some way, shape or form, and I was telling you guys about a book the other night um, that I read about, or it's a, uh, a medical study and a, and a journal of such, and it was talking about epilepsy. And there's a, a style, style of epilepsy that's actually purely, I can't, I can't for the life of me remember what it's called, but it's actually, um, they're phantom epileptic fits. Mm -hmm. And so they'll go in and they will have all these tests because they've had an epileptic fit, epileptic fit and the doctor will be baffled because they have none of the strands, none of the none of the the chemicals and whatnot that would say that you actually have epilepsy. And so what deep psychologists have done is they've done the work to go into that person's life and understand that what happened was they had some kind of a traumatic experience, emotion, or thing somewhere in their life that they have gone and suppressed so hard, so fast, and pushed so many years of crap on top of it that eventually the internal fire, the internal voice, the flame, the soul, whatever you want to call it, gets to a point where it goes, enough. Mm -hmm. And if that person has been conditioned, beaten, battered, or stuck in fear or anger suppressed for too long, the body and the mind can't cope and they crack. And things like this phantom epilepsy will come up as a uh, eruption. Uh, it's the final, it's the beginning point. It's the beginning and the end because if they don't take notice in that point and it continues and gets medicated and gets suppressed even longer, mm -hmm. it kills them. Where if you actually are at that point and you realize that it doesn't have to be the epileptic thing, what I'm saying here is it will be that feeling, that fire, that burning, that awareness that something does not fit. I am worth more. There is something more. I'm not enough. Something is happening. You all have some some aspect, some part of that mirror ball, that disco, disco ball that I'm speaking of, emotions and trauma and suppression. You all feel some way, shape or form that feeling. And you will get to a point where if you don't do something about it, it will become carcinogenic. And then you will become of dis-ease. Yeah. And this is what so many suffer from. Some people call it the midlife crisis and God knows what else. Okay. Or okay. the marriage breaks up. Or the, the person kills someone. At worst, no, they're not think? killing themselves, they're killing someone else. Because there is such a point, they do not have any understanding of how to do something about it, and they break. What do you, th what do you think midlife crisis has happened? Mm. First of all, people have spent a large chunk of their life being told what to do by their school, their education system, their partner, their job, their kids. Their kids in a lot of these cases, now I'm not saying the kids are the problem, but you get to this point in life, and quite often it's when the kids have left home, now that there's this mass massive amount of push from the other side or whatever's happened, you get to a place where the noise is too much in your head and you just want to be damn well free. Mm. You don't care what you're doing, but you just want to be free. You've had enough of the noise, you've had enough of being controlled, 
And there's only so long we can take this. There's only so long we can hold and handle the noise in our head. We need to do more things that still that noise and come back to a place of presence. But that whole amount of noise that's consistently there is killing you. Mm-hmm. And it's not just the noise. It's, as I say, that control, that dictatorship. Now, a lot of us have it in their, in their job, in our business, in our life and whatever else. I ask you all, how free do you actually think you are? I really want to know how free you actually think you are. It's my hugest value. And I and mine. have probably more freedom than most. But in this day and age, I feel very controlled and it makes me fight. It makes me angry in a lot of ways and I have to deal with it in a lot of other things. And that's why I do as much yoga as I do because if I don't, I'm a nutcase. And, and I'm finding this for a lot of people and I wonder, we've only said it a number of times, how do most people, when I, I know when I get anxious or when I get stressed, the stress that people live in, the stress that I get is only moments compared to the stress or the anxiety that most people live in 24-7. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I would blow my brains out. I'm sorry, I just would I couldn't do that. And that's why I have to manage it and I've learned to manage it in my ways that I have. Yeah, it's, like the, it's like the chained dog analogy. What happens to a dog that was once mm-hmm. free or once had the aspect of getting off a leash and then gets put on a chain and gets neglected? They get, they, maybe they even get put on like a runner, but they're still the same shit every day, the same track, the same thing. And what will happen to a dog, its spirit, its being, its ability, its, its whole essence is to run, be free, be wild, be, be a dog. Yeah. But when we chain them, yeah. they get to a point where they either become ravagely savage. And if they get off that leash, boom, they're gone. They will never come back. They will break or break free. Or it will crush their soul, crush their spirit. They will become so sick that they will just give up on life. Yeah. And this is what so many humans do. It's, it's very interesting to see. Um, I work seven days a week, 12 hour days or more. Some of the days I worked for, I did six months where I worked over 20 hours a day. And I know that doesn't seem possible, but I did that for over six months. And you were flat out, push, 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 push. I wasn't free. I was working, I was slave to the damn money. I thought I was free and because I still had a, had good work that I'd worked for myself, but I was pushing to do all of these things. What I've found now is I'll still do some work to help out friends or to do things, but I'm actually happy to do it. I'm actually happy to do it and I'm happier and more free to go and help out my friends for free, mm. for nothing. I do not want a damn thing and I will come in and I'll do the bit. The job's actually better, they get a better quality job. I'm not stressed doing it and I'm not even getting paid for it because as soon as there's a money attachment to it or as soon as there's, I think, expectations which are controlled, which takes away the freedom, I don't want to do it. And I've found that for myself, I have done a lot of stuff over the years to help people and to help people and to do it for free. I actually don't mind it. I enjoy doing it. It's the same damn job. I put a kitchen in for a friend. I helped some friends do some building work at their place earlier on this year and uh, was happy to rock up and do it. Happy to rock up and do it. I don't want it to turn it. And I said that from you, don't turn this into a job. Mm. Don't turn it into a job because then I'm not going to want to do it and I'm going to want to get paid. And when I work, I want to get paid well for it. And I'm not a big fan of work. It's not my favorite thing in life. <laughs> but my point with all of that is, one of the things that we keep coming back to as well is freedom. We all need our freedom. We all need our space. And slowly, if we don't stand up and if we don't take on our responsibility now the responsibility is two words it's not responsibility it is your ability to respond so when somebody says oh you've got a responsibility for your kids no I'm sorry that's a duty that's a duty and it's something that actually has to be done your responsibility is your ability to respond when an action happens your ability to actually respond to that not all of us have it in us some of us just don't have that fight but there is a point where you get pushed and you actually have to push back there is a point with all of this in balance. And what I've said before, we said this straight after NLP course. I don't actually want to let my anger go. I have anger. When I say by that, I have anger and I get frustrated. But I actually don't want to let that go because it's healthy. There's a healthy level here of balance to be able to say, now is the time to use my anger as fuel, explode, and then let it go. Don't carry it. But it's handy to have it there. It's handy to have all of these elements of your feelings. doesn't matter what it is. So when the time comes, because as we've discovered throughout the last 30 days, there is a time for everything. There is an absolute perfect time for everything. Mm. 
challenge is knowing when to use it. Yeah. And that's the other point is, so if, if you're all loving all the time, you know what you're going to find? You're hurt the other half of the time because you cannot love all the time. There's parts of things that you cannot love. You need to regain your energy and take your moments to rebalance. Absolutely. And find and your you balance. Are, you are all sides of the coin. You are all aspects of being a human. Oh, three sides of a coin. There's a million sides of a coin. Um, and so it's more about understanding that you are the one that has the power. Like today was one of the greatest experiences one of the saddest and greatest experiences and it showed us so many we had what four five four episodes of um human messiness human conditioning and one was um at the cafe this morning we went to go for breakfast with a friend of ours and the young girl was so worked up and frazzled and living in fear, and living in fear because of all of this stuff going on in society we walked in and she said, where's your mask? So we said, we have medical exemptions. All of you. Also, the common sense, those medical exemptions. So. And, and she herself went, well, I have asthma too, but I choose to do this for everybody else. Now... It's a bit of an interesting one. There's no... There, and when there that's said... Of, there is a lot of for and a lot of against. And what I feel is there is a lot of fear mongering. And so the part that really got me, though, was how traumatised this girl was and how in fear she was hmm. that... She just her behavior, the girl was in the edge of a breakdown, and so shaking and shaking and everything. So that enrages me for one the fact that there is so much what we're mongering. doing to society. And the fact it's that disgusting. That, the fact that today the mask is a problem, and the girl is shaking and scared, and within 24 hours, suddenly it's not. It's, it That's makes, what annoys me is that tonight, while they sleep, apparently now it's not a problem, and her stress levels will be tenfold less. That's ridiculous. It, it makes no sense at all. And I mean, I've thought for a moment and I read this yesterday, and we should respect it. It's lunacy. I can't respect lunacy. Mm -hmm. I can't respect a dictatorship where, where there is absolute nonsense. And we all have a side, and I'm not taking away from anyone. If, you, if that's the way you choose to think, again, please think. But if that's the way you choose to think, that's fine. But if this was genuinely impacting this girl's, not only her physical health, her mental health, take some stock, take some decisions. And do you know what? No, your job isn't worth that. Mm -hmm. It's just not. Mm -hmm. There is other jobs. There is other ways to do things and just say, you know what? This is my value. Well, I've got to come to work and be shaking and upset and mm -hmm. virtually in yeah. tears and in fear. This is not the place for you. You need to find that space and go, no, that's your cutoff point. If that's how you're making me feel, I'm not doing that. And that was for your conversation with her, your, your uh, work. There was something that came up and we went, is this what you want? Mm. Yeah, there was a conversation about some work recently. And that's the, always the thing when it comes up to working. Do I want to do this or do I feel like I have to do this? And if I have to do anything, then I don't have to do anything. And I said to Shana when she said this, there was, she, had, she said, I automatically got this feeling. Said, well, that's your answer. Mm. You listen to that. This is the point. If you feel like that from the thought of it, Stay away from it. Mm. And mm. your body has these senses that we tune out. We've been taught mm. to tune them out consistently. You get that gut feeling. A good friend of mine, Ken, says to me, he says, if you feel it, that's how it is. Mm. And what that means is it... But we're tuned to ignore that. We're yeah. tuned that... Um, to listen to what people say, not to, to the way they to make you feel. what the dictatorship says, yeah. not what your internal dialogue says. And like they always go with that. Then the second point, the second thing that came up today was we went to um, Katie down to another um, op shop and we did some shopping. And we walked in there and the lady's first response, again, was the masks. And she said, yes, still here until tomorrow morning. And so she said, as long as you do social distancing. And I said, oh, I've got a medical exemption. She goes, okay. And so I said, of course, naturally. So then she sat there within three metres of me and watched everything I did like I was some kind of shoplifter. Did like you take your, your, your wand and stuff in there, your witch? Oh, yeah, I know. And so she then barked up at another mother and daughter and yelled at them for being together. And the daughter just sat there and went, this, we, we live together. And at that point, at that point, the fact that it was affecting me and the fact she was trying to dictate to, to Cadence as well, not okay. I stood my ground on that. But then the, this other girl was being attacked by this woman and her ferocious fear-mongering. And so she turned around to them and I said, you do realise? She said, it's the law. I went, actually, it's legislation. And they're two different things. And she said, well, it's not until tomorrow. I said, yes, 
and you think that 24 hours is gonna make a damn difference to you. So these two women are here together, you have no right. Then, then a few other things were said, but basically my fur furiosity, fur fieriness about the whole situation was the fact that it's 24 hours and this woman was having such a dig at these people and making myself and Cadence feel like we were doing something very wrong. And then barking at this woman and her daughter and as far as I'm concerned, you have no right. You have no right for us to come in there in a respectable manner and behave in a respectable manner and use a shot that everyone else gets to. Where's the line drawn as to harassment? Where's the line drawn to respect? Where's the line drawn to common decency? Um, there is a post I shared yesterday um, that was done by um, David. David. Have a read of that one. What we are doing to our children Whilst Cadence was in the room, there's no way I'm going to stand down for that, and I'm not oh. going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to set an example for any child to do as they are told and to buy into the fear. And I'm also not going to wear a mask and cover myself. I said to Shana when she came home, I said, "This makes me really happy because quite often I'm standing alone. Quite often I'm the person that's st that's stuck out and doing this on my own. And to see Shana with Cadence doing this and for other people, it makes me proud to, to be able to say, you know what." No, I'm leading by example. We are not doing this regardless of what everyone else does. Don't care because don't, aren't we told this the whole way through school? Don't give in to peer pressure and don't take experimental drugs. Now you've been peer, peer, peer pressured into taking experimental, experimental drugs. But the whole way that this is moving, people are stopping to think and that stop, stopping thinking rather. And the way that it's not just me that's saying this to go and do this. It's not just someone else. And there's people thinking it, but there's so much fear. And a lot of people, and it's, this isn't, the mask is not the thing. It's the action and the way that it's done and the way that it's and supposed to be made. And there are choice. Because truly, if we were to choose our own health, or as they're saying, we are protecting those around us. We're making, by you wearing a mask, you are protecting someone else's health and you are responsible for someone else's health. Excuse me, if I'm responsible for someone else's health, get rid of KFC, get rid of Maccas, get rid of sugar, get rid of all the crap, get rid of so many things. Stop, stop the booze, stop the cigarettes. Stop the drinking, stop the cigarettes. They, hey, actually, they banned you know all of these things. I'd love it if cigarettes. my mother and my father were better parents because of alcohol and cigarettes. If I'm responsible by wearing a mask for your health, There are much better things out there and don't tell me a mask is going to make a difference. If we're responsible for other people's health, then how's about we actually make fruits, vegetables and cooking classes a little bit more readily available? Hmm? Food for thought. It's a, it's a big one and this, this is the big one that, for me. It's this something is... that fires me up beyond anything. And the other part of it is this regurgitated nonsense. Mm -hmm. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Think. What I'm telling you to do is think. Now, if I'm just going to, we can use this on so many examples. We're going to use the COVID for the perfect example for it. The reason being this is quite often I heard people say to me, you shouldn't be doing this. And I said, well, well to please tell me while I'm out. If I'm out and no one else is where the victim is. And, and I had a police officer say to me, it's about flattening the curve. And I said to this police officer, I said, please use flattening in a curve in a sentence before COVID because you're just regurgitating the same bullshit that the news is telling you, the same bullshit that the government is tell, telling you. When you say social distance, come on, come on, come on, come on. What would have you said before? I can just flatten the curve and everything does You're a curve. <laughs> okay. Flatten the curve, we don't want any circles here. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> My point with this is Square nobody down. actually says this. And the same as but, social like, distancing. People are now saying, come on, come on, social distance. Whereas before it was, oh, look, you're in my personal space or something like that. It was never, these are simply words that are regurgitated from your TV, from your government, from the news, from wherever it's come from. And what do they really mean? I mean, it's like the curve of, a, of, a, of an incline or something. Well, we don't really see it's, the incline. But we didn't really see anything really change. And again, it, this isn't, I'm just using that as the example, but my whole point with this is damn well think. Mm. Raise this collective consciousness. I'm not saying that I'm right, I'm probably very wrong. In many ways, but. <laughs> but 
Yeah, but I'm gonna say in many ways because there are some aspects like we are we know that COVID is a real thing. Oh, they just said that I'm wrong. So. Uh, <laughs> COVID is a real thing. The treatment that they have given is not. And working with the people that I do in the industries that I do, the truth is, if we all had more vitamin C, more vitamin D, more sunlight. Fresh more air, fresh air, salt water, more salt water, more earthing and grounding, and putting your bare feet on the ground, eating your vegetables, getting enough sleep. If you did all those things, we'd actually have a fighting chance. But what do they do? They put us inside buildings and inside boxes and then out of the fresh air and out of everything and disconnecting us. I saw we saw on the way back from um, from Lightning Ridge that one about the Seven News taking four of the family members of victims of COVID and they did this disgusting appalling appeal for the government yes yeah it was rough about that and they actually got it was so great to see that on social media they got slammed they I think there was like hundreds of thousands of comments on that one video because they used it as promotional material for for the vaccine for and use these victims or the or the family members and how disgustingly horrifying it was look they were not all gonna actually, ever, not gonna ever all... make light of a victim. Never mm. gonna do that. But you don't use people's grief as promotion. Mm. It's disgusting. Mm. So that... <laughs> that's another thing, yeah. So there's, there's a, we've got off track a little bit we there, did. but but what I found, we come back to that is raising the collective consciousness. Think more, feel more, do more rather than just regurgitating and repeat. Mm. That's and not think... what we're here for. We're not on this planet to regurgitate and repeat, and that's. The simplest thing that I can say to any of us is, if you're asked what you're on the planet for, it wasn't to listen and repeat. That was not what you were here. Listen, understand, dissect, and yeah. translate, and do. Whatever it happens to be, but it wasn't to do that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's been, to wrap it up, this 30 days has taught us that speaking about these things creates conscious thoughts, creates awareness, mm-hmm. creates intrigue, creates agitation, and if our agitation creates any kind of a ripple effect in your life, then we've done what we want us to do. Yeah, yeah. and, and this, this is, as I said, what I, I've done this for a long, long time in so many different ways um, because I've very outspoken in a lot of things and I do. I know that I think and I feel very, very different to the rest of the world in so many things. Um, a gentleman said to me today, he said, oh, the way you do the live, you could do this and you could do that and the other. I said, oh, yeah. Well, to be honest, I'm happy to do things and see where they go, but my end goal here isn't to make money and this is one of those things that we sort of can feel into a little bit more because the way we do this and the way we do our life every single one of us at some stage and probably a lot of us more like longer than we would like to think are doing everything we can do to make some damn money Mm. and i'm sorry that there's a lot more important things than some that. of us actually aren't there just to make money like some of us actually care about this whole thing called yeah. experiencing life and freedom i i and that's something consistently want to raise the consciousness i want to help or trigger people to think even i don't care how it, i want you to think mm-hmm. if i've if i've said something that's offended you and it's caused you to go and do some research that is perfect if i've said something you've agreed with that's caused you to go and do some research or think different to the status quo. Thank you. Mm. If we have together put this together and just given you some little tips that have helped us get to this present moment, perfect. Doesn't really matter, but I would love to hear all the information. I'd love to hear back from you and see what you actually do think. Um, I feel like, as I say, for us, we're just playing. We're just having a talk. We're just having fun. This is kind of our nightly talk that happens when neither of us can sleep and it's, you know, and we want to be sleeping. Um, <laughs> we talk about this stuff all the time so we thought we'd start sharing it and just see where it goes so yeah. if you have enjoyed any of this and you haven't watched all of them but I'll pop the YouTube link channel link underneath all of this I'll also chuck it into my link tree in Instagram and yeah just start creating from this space because for us this is it's called having a voice and using it and I think that's where we're, we're now moving is into how can we have this voice and use it yeah so, without further ado, that's 30 days. It seems like it's That cooked. 30 days is done. But so we're going to start coming out with our own content. Yeah. It um, is going to be sporadic and probably... Uh, not always, not every day. We'll do it a couple of days a week. Whenever we feel like it. Um, that being said, if you do want to be on the It's On list, 
we can let you know when it, when we're going to do it. Because yeah, we've got a few of you that we have to message whenever we go to get on because we just want to know that we're doing it. So, yeah, we can do that. But look, to be honest, we've been enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And we can thank everyone that has watched. We thank you all for your comments, your love, your sharing, your your messages. We, we love you all so much. And I think that's what spurs us on is, is the love and the gratitude. Thanks. From the deep awareness in me. To the deep awareness in you.